As of October 1st, 2020, there were 2,553 death row inmates in the United States. Male, 2,502, 98.00%. Female, 51, 2.00%. The number of death row inmates changes frequently with new convictions, appellate decisions overturning conviction or sentence alone, commutations, or deaths through execution or otherwise. Due to this fluctuation as well as lag and inconsistencies in inmate reporting procedures across jurisdictions, List of women on death row in the United States. There are currently 51 women on death row. California has the highest number of women on death row. Amongst the 51 women on death row, 22 of them are in the state of California. There are 6 women on death row in Texas. There are five women waiting executions in Alabama. Three women on death row in Arizona. Ohio has one woman on death row. Three women on death row in Florida. Louisiana has one woman on death row. Mississippi has one woman on death row. There are two women on death row in North Carolina. Kentucky has one woman on death row. In Tennessee, there is one woman on death row. Pennsylvania has one woman on death row. Idaho and Georgia each has one woman on death row. These are their names and crimes committed. Patricia Blackman Blackman was convicted in the death of her two-year-old adopted daughter, Dominiqua Bryant. According to an autopsy report, the child suffered a fractured skull, several broken bones, bruises and a shoe print on her chest. Heather Leval Keaton In March and June 2010, Leval Keaton murdered her common-law husband's children, three-year-old Chase DeBlaze and four-year-old Natalie DeBlaze. Prosecutors allege that she put in the freeze in the children's food and choked them both to death. Tara Capri Gobble Gobble was convicted in the death of her four-month-old son, Phoenix Cody Parrish. According to a coroner's report, the infant suffered extensive bruising and fractures of the skull, ribs and wrists. The cause of death was determined to be head trauma consistent with child abuse. Lisa Leanne Graham On July 5, 2007, Graham was convicted of capital murder for persuading a family friend to gun Graham's daughter down on a remote dirt road in Russell County. Graham was sentenced to death. Wendy Andriano Andriano was convicted of the murder of her husband Joe Andriano. Her 33-year-old husband Joe was bludgeoned and stabbed to death in the couple's apartment in Ahwatukee, Arizona. His autopsy revealed that he had sustained 23 blows to the skull, and traces of sodium azide, a toxin similar in activity to cyanide, were also found in his system. Shauna Ford On May 30, 2009, 29-year-old Raul Flores and his daughter, Presenia, 9, of Aravaca, Arizona, were killed at home during a home invasion by Ford, Jason Eugene Bush, and Albert Gaxiola. Samantha Allen On July 12, 2011, police officers were called to aim Deal's home where she was found dead in a small footlocker, having suffocated. 
Aim lived with a number of relatives, including her aunt and legal guardian, Cynthia Stoltzman. Alan was Stoltzman's daughter. The family first told the police officers that Aim was playing hide-and-seek and locked herself in the trunk the night before, after the adults went to sleep. During interrogation, Samantha and her husband John confessed to locking Aim in the trunk as a form of punishment, because she took a popsicle without permission. Rosie Alfaro on June 15, 1990, nine-year-old Autumn Wallace was stabbed to death. Prosecutors say 18-year-old Alfaro, an acquaintance of the family, robbed the house for drug money, and killed Wallace so she would not be identified. So Coro Caro. Caro was convicted of shooting and killing three of her four young sons as they slept. The youngest child, who was one at the time, was unharmed. She then turned the gun on herself in a suicide attempt. Although she suffered a gunshot wound to the head, she survived after two surgeries. Celeste Carrington Carrington admitted to the fatal shooting of Victor Esperanza, janitor at a shoe factory, in January 1992, and Caroline Gleason, a property manager at a real estate office in Palo Alto. In another robbery two months later, five days after killing Gleason, she shot and wounded Alan Marks a Redwood City pediatrician, during a robbery of his office. Cynthia Kaufman Along with boyfriend James Marlowe, Kaufman was convicted of the murders of four women in October and November 1986. Carrie Lynn Dalton Dalton was convicted of torturing and murdering Irene Louise in 1988 at a mobile home park in Live Oak Springs, California. She and three others, Mark Lee Tompkins, Cheryl Ann Baker, and another man known only by the name George, were alleged to have used various weapons to commit a torture murder. A cast iron frying pan, a knife, and a syringe filled with battery acid. Susan Eubanks. Eubanks was convicted of the shooting deaths of her four sons, 14-year-old Brandon, 7-year-old Austin, 6-year-old Brigham and 4-year-old Matthew. She also had a self-inflicted gunshot wound to her abdomen, but survived. Veronica Gonzalez Along with her husband Yvonne, Gonzalez was convicted of the 1995 scalding death her four-year-old niece, Genevieve Royas. She was convicted of first-degree murder with special circumstances of torture and mayhem. They are the first married couple in California on death row for the same crime. Lorraine Hunter Hunter shot her husband in an effort to gain money from life insurance policy. Cherry Lash Rhodes Lash Rhodes shot six people at the Cedarville Rancuria Tribal Office in Alturas ultimately killing four on February 20, 2014. Officials said at least one of the injured was also attacked with a butcher knife after Lash Rhodes ran out of ammunition, Belinda Magana. Separate juries concluded in January 2015 that Magana, a mother from Corona, and her boyfriend Nourish Marine deserved the death penalty for the May 2009 murder of her toddler son Malachi, who was scalded and subjected to beatings before he died five days later. Maureen McDermott 
McDermott was convicted of hiring an orderly at the hospital where she worked to kill her roommate, Stephen Eldridge. Prosecutors allege the motive was to collect mortgage insurance on a house they co-owned. In addition to having been repeatedly stabbed, Eldridge's penis was severed post-mortem. The orderly testified that this was done at McDermott's insistence, in order to make it appear that the killing was a homosexual murder, because, in theory, the police would be unlikely to investigate it thoroughly. Sandy Nieves Nieves was convicted of the murders of four of her children by setting fire to the family home. She was also found guilty of arson and the attempted murder of her son David, who was 14 at the time. He survived the fire and testified against her in court. Angelina Rodriguez Rodriguez was convicted of killing her husband with antifreeze laced gator aid. She allegedly made several unsuccessful attempts to kill him on previous occasions. Mary Samuels Samuels was convicted of hiring a hitman to kill her 40-year-old husband, whom she was divorcing. She was also convicted in the death of the hitman, whom she had hired. Neen Snyder Snyder and Michael Thornton were convicted of kidnapping, torturing, sexually abusing and killing 16-year-old Michelle Curran in 2001. Catherine Thompson Along with Philip Sanders and his wife Carolyn, Catherine was convicted in the shooting death of Thompson's husband. Valerie D. Martin Along with her 16-year-old son, a 14-year-old boy, and 27-year-old ex-convict Christopher Kenny, Martin was convicted in the death of her boyfriend, who was knocked out and put into the trunk of his car, which was then set ablaze. Michelle Lynn Michaud Michaud and her boyfriend James Anthony DeVeggio were convicted of luring a 22-year-old woman into a specially rigged van where they sexually tortured and strangled her before dumping her body. On a snowy embankment Tanya Nelson Nelson was convicted in the stabbing deaths of fortune teller High Jade Smith and her daughter Anita V.O. Brooke Marie Rotiers. Prosecutors alleged that Rotiers, who sometimes worked as a prostitute, lured two men to her motel room pretext of sex before she robbed, beat and suffocated them. The victims were found with panties and other cloth items stuffed in their mouths. Their mouths and noses were covered and taped over. They were hogtied with cords around their necks, connected to their hands, which were behind their backs, and to their ankles. Kathy Lynn Saranana Saranana and her husband Raul were convicted in the respective August and December 2005 deaths of her nephews Conrad who was 13 and Ricky Morales who was 11, who were in their custody. Manling Sang Williams Williams was convicted of smothering her two young children with a pillow and slashing her husband to death with a sword in the family's Roland Heights home in 2007. Margaret Allen Allen was convicted of torturing and killing her housekeeper, Wenda Wright. She allegedly thought Wright had stolen money from her purse. Prosecutors said the torture went on for hours before Wright died after being strangled with a belt. Allen's roommate, James Martin, and nephew, Quinton Allen, 
were both convicted for their part in helping her try to bury the body in a shallow grave. Tina LaSonia Brown Brown was convicted of beating 19-year-old Audrina Zimmerman with a crowbar, shocking her with a stun gun, and then setting her on fire in Brown's family home. Brown's daughter Brittany Miller, then 16, told the judge at her own trial that the plan was to fight Zimmerman, but it escalated out of control. The attack was said to be the result of a disagreement over a man. After beating her and using the stun gun, the trio put Zimmerman in the trunk of a car, drove her to a wooded area, doused her with gasoline and set her on fire. Zimmerman was able to run to a nearby home and call 911 with severe burns across 60% of her body. She died two weeks later. Tiffany Cole. Cole, along with three men, was convicted of the kidnapping and first-degree murder of Florida couple Carol and Reggie Sumner. Before the Sumners moved to Florida, Cole was their neighbor in South Carolina. While visiting the Sumners in Florida, the group robbed the Sumners before driving them across the state line to Georgia, where the couple was buried alive. Tiffany Moss Moss was convicted in 2019 for the 2013 torture and starvation death of her 10-year-old stepdaughter, Imani Moss, Robin Lee Rowe. Rowe was convicted of the 1992 deaths of her husband and two children. Prosecutors say she set the family home on fire in order to collect insurance money. Virginia Susan Cottle Cottle was convicted of the 1998 death of a 73-year-old female. Prosecutors allege that Cottle and an accomplice entered the home of Lonetta White, beat her to death and then burglarized her home. They then placed her body in the trunk of her own vehicle and drove her to a rural area in Fayette County and set the car on fire. Antoinette Frank Frank was a New Orleans police officer when she and Rogers Lacazzi killed Officer Ronald Williams and siblings Ha and Kwong Vu, owners of the Kim An restaurant during a 1995 robbery. Lisa Jo Chamberlain Chamberlain, along with Roger Lee Gillett, was convicted in the March 2004 deaths of Linda Heintzelman and Heintzelman's boyfriend, Vernon Hewlett. Their bodies were found inside a freezer at an abandoned farm. Blanche Taylor Moore Moore was convicted of killing her boyfriend by slipping arsenic into his food. Moore is suspected of killing three other people and nearly killing another in the same manner. Carlette Parker Parker was a home health care worker taking care of 88-year-old Alice Covington. She allegedly withdrew approximately $44,000 from Covington's account. When Covington confronted her, Donna Roberts. Roberts was convicted in the 2001 death of her ex-husband, Robert Fingerhut. Prosecutors alleged that she solicited her lover, Nate Jackson, to commit the crime. Brenda E. Andrew. Brenda and her boyfriend Jim Pavitt were convicted of the shooting death of Andrew's husband Rob Michelle Southarb. Michelle starved her seven-year-old daughter to death who weighed less than 12 pounds and then dumped her body on a road. Krista Pike. 
In 1995, 18-year-old Krista Pike lured out her classmate, 19-year-old Colleen Slammer, to an isolated section of the University of Tennessee agricultural campus. Spurred on by the belief that Slemmer was trying to steal her boyfriend, Tadero Ship. Pike bashed her head with a chunk of asphalt and kept a piece of the skull as a souvenir. Kimberly Cargill. Cargill was convicted of the 2010 murder of her children's babysitter, Cherry Walker. Prosecutors say Walker was scheduled to testify in Cargill's child custody hearing. Linda Carty. Carty was convicted for the abduction and murder of 25-year-old Joanna Rodriguez in order to steal her newborn son. Prosecutors alleged that Carty orchestrated the crime which was committed by three masked men who abducted Rodriguez and her son. Rodriguez was later found dead in the trunk of a car. Her three-day-old son was rescued from a car parked nearby. The other three men were arrested, but only Cardi was prosecuted for capital murder. Brittany Holberg Holberg was convicted of the November 13, 1996, robbery and murder of 80-year-old Abe Towery Sr. in his southwest Amarillo home. Melissa Elizabeth Lucio Lucio was convicted in the murder of her two-year-old daughter, one of her nine children. The woman told authorities the child had fallen down the stairs, but physicians in the ER found she had bruises covering her body, bite marks on her back, an arm that had been broken weeks earlier, and was missing hair that had been pulled by the roots from her head. Darlie Routier Rautier was convicted in the 1996 stabbing of her two young sons, Damon and Devon. Rautier herself sustained a number of wounds. She maintains the attack was by an intruder. The prosecutor maintains Rautier's wounds were self-inflicted and she was the perpetrator. Rowdier's infant son and her husband were asleep upstairs and were unharmed. Erica Yvonne Shepard. Along with James Dickerson, Shepard was convicted of killing Marilyn Marr as part of a rock. Christy Michelle Scott. Gobble was convicted in the death of her four-month-old son, Phoenix Cody Parrish. According to a coroner's report, the infant suffered extensive bruising and fractures of the skull, ribs and wrists. The cause of death was determined to be head trauma consistent with child abuse.